Morning. Marcus Conti reporting. A little sick. Check this shit out, man. You're going to love this. Watch it together. I'm sorry. Stop. Don't do it. Oh. Damn. Now the big one. Energy weapon. Pow, you remember those? En energy weapons. Fuck. <laughs> so, so, so I was sick yesterday, right? I just want to tell you a little story. I don't know, man, because there's always these conspiracy theories. <clears throat> and as a disclaimer, I not, I might not be my full funny self uh, today, but <clears throat> so there's always these conspiracy theories. Every time you, <clears throat> people in the press, right? They uh, or people in our community, the truth community, they reveal something truthful, and then they get sick, and then is it a, and then the speculation starts. Oh, it's a fucking energy weapon. They they're trying to kill you. Oh, right? Is that what that is? Eh, fucking. So, <clears throat> so no shit, man. I got I I um so I got sick yesterday, right? And uh, I don't know why I'm telling this story, but I think it's interesting, you know, untruthful too. So so I uh. So I'm, I'm sick, right? And I think I got the flu, right? But it turns out, like, I don't have any symptoms. I don't have any sneezing, no coughing. All I have is, like, this uh, this uh, flu-like uh, intensity. And it turns out I think it was food poisoning or something. But it was it was serious, right? And so, so I, um, so long story short, I passed out in a fucking tub, right? <laughs> I'm standing in the shower, right? And it's not even funny, man. I went down, right? And and uh, and I think I cracked the rib on the way down. Right? So, so, I mean, did I get shot with an energy weapon? Did somebody fucking zap me? Did I get the the you know Star Trek? Jerkoff's calling me. I know Star Trek. Star Trek. Did Star Trek get me? Did I get fucking zapped with a? But I have all the. Uh, I mean, I got this massive pain on my right side, on my left side, right, right in the fucking ribs. Right, like I snapped a rib, but was that an energy shot? You know, because in trauma, when you fall, like when I got up, I didn't feel anything. And I didn't feel anything going into the sickness. But when I got up, I had this like snapped rib. <laughs> so, I, I don't fucking know, man, but it's it's fun to it's fun to think about right that it that was i just sick you know and and really i did i it's the first time i ever passed out in my life and i don't all i remember is being very dizzy it's also exhaustion you know just, fucking people think this shit is easy and so i go i go down and i and the last thing i remember the last thing i remember is like coming to on on the sitting in the tub uh, shit is fucked up, man. So anyway, so here's a story. Uh, I'm going to talk about a couple of things. That's a uh, energy weapon. I'll talk more about that. But uh, let's talk about the Bush funeral. There was so much made about the Bush funeral, how Clinton interacted with with uh, Trump and Clinton, and Hillary was there. I'll talk about um, Assange's release. I'm just going to do this all in one because I think this is all I have for today before I fucking go back to bed. And so. Uh, Assange's release, uh, release, release, <laughs> release, and the big D five Q day. What happened? It came and it went. Let's talk about it. Right? So fucking, this is the big one right here. Let's talk about this. Shit. Watch closely for something.
So why, you know, what was the big deal, right? The 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 mainstream media showed they they had all kinds of captions. I saw CNN was talking about how the fucking um, Mr. Lemon, whatever. Hold on a second. This bullshit. So, right? They were talking about, you know, they were talking about uh, putting all this context, right? Putting all this context to, to what just happened. But what really happened? What really happened? The President of the United States walks down. We'll watch it again, but. Right? We'll watch it again. So, so. I'm sorry about that. I just I, I got I got messed up on the technology here. So so Trump comes in and and mainstream media CNN is saying, "Oh, fucking Obama, Michelle Obama s- snubbed Hillary and uh, Michelle snubbed Trump and 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 Obama shouldn't have shook Trump's hand because that says that he com- he believes in racism and 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 Hillary gave gave Melania the dirty puss. This is what they're saying. This is what this is fucking Chris Cuomo and that other jack off Lemon Lennon, whatever his name is, the commentator on CNN, and going back and forth about defending this insane these insane speculations. Oh, there's a new guest in the house. Watch this. I don't know if he's still there. Ah, oh, I got up. It's the black cat seat. He was over there a second ago. He's not there anymore. But you see all the shit. So let's watch it again. See if we could see any of that. I know. I know. I gotta go talk to. I gotta see fucking Trump. That jerk off. I know. I'm not gonna shake that man's hand. I'm not shaking his hand. Bill, I don't give a fuck. I love everybody. I love everybody. Say, what are they really thinking? And here comes Trump. Here comes the big man, right? Big man coming in. Look, Obama smiling. How you doing? Melania Trump leaning over. The President of the United States' wife leaning over. None of those jerk-offs got up. None of the jerk-offs got up. That's what I see. How come Obama and fucking Bill Clinton didn't get up? The wife has to lean over? Fuck you, man. See, that's how I interpret it, right? So, so that's, I mean, all to do about nothing, right? So we saw it, and it's a funeral, and, and everybody's somber and, and respectful, and Hillary even gave the nod. There's fucking nothing there, man. It's such a bullshit story. Right? So, so big, bigger story is Julian Assange. Ecuador President Lenin... Murano said Thursday that WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange can leave his country's embassy anytime he wants, and the sooner the better. <laughs> what a dig. I do not like the presence... Hold on a second. <laughs> Some raw footage today. Sorry about that. There's a hiss. You heard that hiss? That's a heater. Heater kicking in. So, where was I? Oh, sooner the better. Get the fuck out of my house. So, I do not like the presence of Mr. Assange. Now, this is the president of Ecuador. It's not just, it's not just anybody. Lenin Moreno is the president of Ecuador. I do not like the presence of Mr. Assange in the Ecuadorian embassy, but we have been respectful of his human rights, and with respect, that respect in mind, we think six years is enough. Uh, <coughs> He says, there is a path for Mr. Assange to take the decision to exit into near freedom. Assange had whined that Ecuador was seeking to end his asylum and and hand him over to the United States, where prosecutors will prepare a criminal case against him. He's got reason to believe that, right? WikiLeaks has released thousands of classified U.S. military documents, among other disclosures, including thousands of emails that were, quote, hacked from Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. No evidence whatsoever to suggest that. Marino noted that Assange still faced jail time in the UK for violate, violating bail terms when he sought asylum to avoid being extradited to Sweden where authorities wanted to question him on other stuff. The investigation was later dropped, but Britain said it would be it would 
continued to arrest him if he left the embassy where he has lived for six years under asylum. Now, there's also speculation that he would get time served for that. So I'll tell you what I think about this. Marino said the sentence for skipping bail would be not long, if, if at all, right? Do you, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I filled that in. <laughs> Marino said the sentence for skipping bail would be, quote, not long. The UK has told Ecuador that his jail time would not exceed six months and he would not face extradition if he left the embassy. Assange insists British authorities will hand him over to the U.S. Now, this is, this is interesting because Assange is a prisoner in, a, in an embassy in Ecuador. He's confined to, I think, two rooms. They took away his, his power. They took away his internet his visitation or whatever the fuck. They, they're killing him, right? Took away his email. Right? Right? He can leave at any time, right? Britain's, he's, he has, he's facing nothing in, in Sweden. Nothing. Britain says that the, mo, the max Ecuador president went on the record. Now, Ecuador president's also on the record saying he doesn't like Assange. Get the hell out of my house. Right? But he's also on the record saying that he wouldn't be extradited to the U.S., so why is now, but then again, roll the record back, how many times have U.S. diplomats, Hillary Clinton, all of the diplomats, I'm not going to go through them all, but there's, there's at least 10 major political figures, senators and congressmen, that have called for the assassination of Assange prior to 2016 with the uh, Edward Snowden leak, with all that, that, that shit, right? Chelsea Manning leak, whatever, whatever leak it was, right? The fucking classified shit, right? So, so they they already called for his his assassination, and Assange could be astute in holding his ground, but what ground is he holding? He's in prison. He's incarcerated. Now, if he made his way to the U.S., you know, in the past, that would mean that you would be you would be awarded American. Uh, dip, diplomacy, but we don't have that anymore, right? Because now it's just the, the, all the courts are kangaroo courts. So he has a a legitimate reason to be afraid to step foot out of that embassy. But that reason is 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 starting to dwindle, and it might be time for Julian Assange to step the fuck out of that embassy and face the music. Let's get get on with it before you you know, dwindled down to nothing, you know, bag of bones, right? Or somebody shoots you with a fucking energy gun in the, in the hip, cracks your rib, right? So, I don't know, man. I think it's time for, I think it's time for Assange to go. I don't know what you think, guys. So, I'll, I'll just touch on the big, oh, the big fucking D-Day, D-5-Day Q. God damn it. Oh, we were waiting. We were holding our fingers. The market's going to crash. The fucking everything's going to go to shit. Something big is going to happen. Something big is going to happen. <laughs> that was on the 5th of, 5th of December, and now it's, it's the 12th of December. We're still here. The markets are fucking holding. It's, it's nine o'clock. The what? The market lost eight hundred points the other day. That's not a big deal. Right? It's still teetering at the top. If it crashes, hey, look, I, I I have no skin in the game. I fucking would love to see it go down. I just don't think there's any indication that it will. That's that's all. That's all I was implying the other day, right? I didn't. I I'm implying that based on the technical analysis and based on the the uh, lack of increase in volume, the lack of selling pressure, uh, and the chart, that technical chart, there's no real indication that the markets are going to crash and that um, that the oligarchy is in any way nervous whatsoever, right? Right? Because Q is Trump and Trump is ready to do something big, right? But there's no indication of that. So, sorry, Q. Now, w will we hear the... Uh, all of the uh, Q commentators come on now and say, oh, we were wrong. We were wrong. We had, because look, if the market crashes, I'll be the first one to come on and say, I was fucking wrong. The market crashed, right? And But until that happens, then uh, Mr. Q, Q supporters, Q cheerleaders come out and say that you were fucking wrong. And you guys know who you are. Marcus Conti reporting.